Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, may I take this opportunity to welcome you all along today to today's Cabinet meeting. Uh, our leader, Councillor Noble, is unable to attend today uh, as his role in Deputy Chairman of the Suffolk Energy Coast Delivery Board. He is meeting with the Chairman, Dr. Therese Coffey, MP, and with Greg Clark, Right Honourable Greg Clark, MP, uh, and therefore I'll be chairing today's meeting. This was not the uh, meeting of Councillor Noble. It was called by the chairman, the other person, hence the, the clash of the meeting. So that's why Councillor Noble can't be with us. Please may I remind you that an audio recording is being made of this meeting and will be made available to the public thereafter. Uh, the council members of the public and the press may also record film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and the press are not lawfully excluded under any exempt material or legislation. Any member of the public in attendance today who objects to being filmed, please advise me, us, now, uh, so we can instruct that you are not included in the filming. You are content with that? Thank you so much. There is no planned fire drill this afternoon. If the fire alarm should sound, please leave the chamber by following the fire exit signs at the rear of the chamber. Fire evacuation instructions can also be found on page four of the agenda. Firstly, ladies and gentlemen, apologies for absence. Thank you. Apologies for absence have been received from Councillor Colin Noble. Are there any other apologies? Thank you. Item number two, declarations of interest and dispensations. Uh, cabinet members to declare any interest and state which agenda item they may relate to. Any, any at all, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much indeed. Uh, other colleagues? Thank you very much. Uh, item number three, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, in seeking the approval of cabinet members to those minutes, I want to be able to uh, move an amendment to them, if I may, insofar as to advise you that councillors Tony Brown and Bill Mountford are to be added to those listed as present. Could I have your agreement to that amendment accordingly? Thank you very much indeed. And uh, following on from that, could I have your agreement, Cabinet, to those minutes being okay? Thank you for your support. <coughs> Next item. Item number four. No public questions were received for today's Cabinet meeting. Thank you very much indeed. No public questions having been received. Let's move on to item number five, standing item update from the scrutiny chairman. We have received apologies this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, from Councillor Mary Evans, chairman of the scrutiny committee, and uh, we're able to welcome Councillor John Field, vice chairman of the scrutiny committee, who will provide the scrutiny update on her behalf. Thank you for that. The scrutiny update was sent to all councillors by email prior to the meeting, and hard copies have been circulated. Thank you, Councillor Field. Thank you. Well, I shall assume everybody has read this and just make a brief summary. As you can see, the uh, Health Scrutiny Committee has met and uh, has uh, the Great Yarmouth and Waveney Joint Health Scrutiny Committee. There's not been a meeting of the Main Scrutiny Committee in this period. Uh, health scrutiny covered, as you can see, a very important subject, uh, the, the current and future capacity in residential and nursing care market in Suffolk, obviously something which uh, exercises a number of minds. Uh, there's a comprehensive report here with a, a number of recommendations. The ones well, the one which we really wish to emphasise is a recommendation B, that uh, the committee uh, agreed to give its full support to the proposal that health and social care sector skills should remain a priority area for the new Anglia Local Enterprise Partnership and to request for the next meeting a report on the outcomes of discussions to this end. 
as considered to be the most vital element, uh, and the uh, committee has made a representation on that basis to the LEP, I understand. Um, so we look forward to some progress. I think that's the only point I really want to flag out on here. Um, the next uh, meeting of the committee will be looking, that's the Health Scrutiny Committee, will be looking at the NHS workforce issues, which are also a, a subject of uh, national interest at the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Field. Uh, I feel obliged to ask now Cabinet members to respond to those recommendations, if you can see them. And may I ask, uh, yes, thank you, Tony yeah, Newson, Newson to reply. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yes, we've, uh, from the health perspective, we fully endorse that recommendation on B. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Anyone, any other comments, questions from Cabinet? Yes, Councillor Hopfenberger. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'd like to thank the committee for... Um, the scrutiny that took place on the 14th of April. I think it was really, uh, as um, the Vice Chairman said, that it was a, it's a really important subject to have scrutinised and indeed when we welcome the, um, the help of the scrutiny committee in, in looking at this issue. And I too would like to um, highlight point B and thank the um, scrutiny committee for their support. This is indeed a very important day today actually. Um, where the um, presentation is being made to the New Anglia um, Local Enterprise Partnership um, with regards to the skills agenda for health and social care sector. So um, we'd like to really thank them for their endorsement. Indeed, my Cabinet colleagues, um, colleague um, Tony for his endorsement as well on this important subject. Thank, thank you very much indeed. Uh, other comments from Cabinet colleagues? We'll turn, if we may, to uh, other councillors. Councillor McGregor, thank you. As it's the report of the Health Scrutiny Committee, I wonder if I could just ask a question about this committee to be handed back to it, and that is to ask the question some time ago I raised the issue about the scandalous underutilisation of Hardesmere Hospital. Uh, at the time, I was promised an inquiry would take place into that. I was wondering if that could be reported back to the Health Scrutiny Committee to say, I'm still concerned about the scandalous underutilisation of Hardesmere Hospital and what the proposals are for its better utilisation in a much needed uh, area of, of, of deprivation in terms of health facilities. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Would you, would you seek um, an oral, re oral response this afternoon, say from Councillor Fuel, if he were prepared to do so, or would you like a written reply from the Chairman? All I want is that it is noted that I've asked yep. the question, and I hope the Health Scrutiny Committee will take it on board. We hear what you say. Thank you very much indeed. Other comments from colleagues? Thank you. Then that's approved and noted. Thank you. Point six, East Anglia three, offshore wind farm. That's page 11. It's a consultation response. It gives me pleasure now to uh, revert to Councillor Matthew Hicks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, the East Anglia array uh, will be one of the biggest wind farms in the world, with a generating capacity twice that proposed for Sizewell C on completion. Half of the array will be developed by Scottish Power Renewables, and half by Vattenfall, which is the Swedish state utility, mm. in a series of phased developments. The four uh, Scottish Power Renewable projects are all expected to connect to the national grid here in Suffolk. The first of these, East Anglia 1, received planning consent from the Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change in June 2014, and in February 2016, Scottish Power Renewables announced that a final investment decision on the project which has triggered a £2.5 billion investment and the generation of an estimated 3,000 jobs during the construction phase is due to start in January uh, 2017 next year. The project has actually already benefited Suffolk and during the planning process alone, more than £15 million worth of contracts were awarded to local companies working on the project. The port of Lowestoft has now been confirmed as the base for the project and contract management during construction and subsequently will be the base for operational and maintenance activities as part of the 25 million 30-year contract. East Anglia 3 is the second phase of development and even bigger than the first in terms of generation, 
1.2 gigawatts versus 714 megawatts. As with East Anglia 1, while East Anglia 3 presents great economic opportunities to Suffolk, we must be mindful of the physical impacts of the onshore work in Suffolk. During the examination of East Anglia 1, Suffolk County Council was insistent that, as part of the cable laying for the project, empty ducts should also be laid so that when future projects came along, the trenches would not need to be redug but rather the cables could be pulled through, requiring access only at intervals. Having secured such an approach, this will see much reduced impact from the project, especially in terms of traffic movements, compared to those of the East Anglia 1 project. However, as the report does make clear, there are issues to resolve in relation to how East Anglia 3 project will interact with both East Anglia 1 prior to it and also projects that follow it. This particularly applies to the use of temporary infrastructure, such as the Hall Road and construction laydown areas, which may be able to be reused for successive phases, rather than having to construct and then remove them for each phase. We must avoid the cable corridor taking the appearance of a construction site for an extended period of time, with, while all the phases of the wind farm are actually built out. In the operational phase, it is the substation proposed at Bramford that will have the greatest impact locally. And as with East Anglia 1, considerable emphasis is being placed on minimising this effect. And this is done through comprehensive landscaping and good design. The £100,000 in the Section 1 agreement for off-site landscaping in association with East Anglia 1 will also, of course, benefit this project. So in summary, Suffolk County Council reached common ground with Scottish Power Renewables on how to minimise all the impacts associated with East Anglia 1, and those mitigation measures will similarly apply to East Anglia 3 project in order to make it acceptable to Suffolk. There will, of course, be some disruption, most noticeable in terms of traffic increases on some roads, but of a much shorter duration than the East Anglia 1 project. As we, so to speak, got it right the first time, we can now expect the benefits of that to continue to grow with less impact. Consequently, I do recommend this report to Cabinet. Thank you, Councillor Hicks. Uh, comments, questions from Cabinet? <clears throat> yes, Councillor Finch. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I welcome this report. Um, I, I welcome in particular the fact that um, this particular business has decided to underground the whole of the cables from the coast right through to Bramford. Bramford. Um, what I would say is I think this is an extremely good example of how to manage this sort of project in an area of outstanding natural beauty. Um, and I hope, and the fact that this business can do that and they find it economically viable, that this will be a good example to National Grid when they come along to look at the continued expansion of the capacity from Bramford down to Twinsman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Finch. Yes, it seems an excellent template for the future, doesn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Smith. Again, I'd just like to say a few words which are very complimentary, and uh, I agree entirely with, uh, entirely with what uh, Councillor Hicks has said. Uh, I did have Cabinet responsibility for this area a couple of years ago when East Anglia 1 was being considered. Um, on the advice, very strong advice of officers, we insisted on various things which were taken on board and have happened, and therefore it makes this stage with a new offshore wind farm so much easier. So well done all round. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, other colleagues? Yes, Councillor McGregor first, then Councillor Flood, then Councillor Field. Thank you. Part of the issue here, of course, is that this undergrounding to Bromford is longer than from Bromford to Twinstead. And the work which this particular consortium has done in cooperation with the local authority in getting stuck in, and also the way they've negotiated with the landowners over whose land they're going under, means that there's a benefit in financial terms to Suffolk, i.e. people being paid for the rights of way. Unlike the attitude of National Grid, where each power 
pylon has detriment effect of at least a million pounds to the community, and we get no benefit whatsoever. Now, my concerns are in the, in the uh, um, or should I say all this? I think that this is truly an excellent paper, and congratulations, if I may say, not damning him with faint praise, to the actual author of this particular paper, which lays out the issues and what's been achieved and what it really is all about. But one or two things I would like to be concerned about, particularly issues concerning landfall in the future on the expansion of this energy supply at low stuff and potentially Great Yarmouth. Because whereas National Grid are offering a connection at Bromford, which is being undergrounded, there's no such opportunity, as far as I can see, if it should come in at Lowestoft or Great Yarmouth. Now, Great Yarmouth can look after itself, but at Lowestoft, the connection to the National Grid is across and through the Waverley Valley. Great Yarmouth would, be, in fact, be across a national park. And so the issues of connectivity for National Grid there are really quite, quite considerable. So in the end, uh, this, to me, this is a long period of gestation, uh, I was also involved in it. I remember the discussions we had about whether we could insist upon extra capacity to put in new cables, and, and at the time we advised that wasn't possible, but we persevered to avoid the minimisation. So this, to me, and if I compare that with our challenges dealing with EDF and what's going on there, this has been, a, 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 in many ways, a model of how you can actually deal with energy companies, get things done, for mutual benefit all around. And I really do congratulate Suffolk County Council, both the members involved in it and the officers behind it all, to negotiate this particular scheme, which I think will be of tremendous benefit to us. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, thank you for your support, Councillor McGregor. Did, did, did you wish to reply to anything so far, Councillor Hicks? No, I think, I think Councillor McGregor makes, makes his points very clear, and I absolutely endorse what he says. Uh, Councillor Flood, thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, anybody knows my views on uh, wind power will be surprised that I welcome this. Although it will cost £131 per megawatt hour compared with £40 per megawatt hour for a gas turbine power station, we need this. Um, there's a power crunch coming because of incompetence by the energy authorities. Let's, let's be non-political about it. And please note how precarious these wind power schemes are becoming. Galloper extension, this is the last couple of years, these are the, these are the cancellations. Galloper extension, Alpha Bravo, the Atlantic Array, the Celtic Array, the Argyle uh, wind farm, offshore wind farm, was cancelled because it would disturb basking sharks. Um, we have to as a council, we have to make sure that we are scrupulous in encouraging these people. We do not wish to be blamed if anything goes wrong. We don't want to give them an excuse to blame us. Um, speaking of which, I'm interested in what these things do to birds on the migratory routes across the North Sea. I haven't seen any reports on that. I know the land-based ones kill a lot of birds. Um, paragraph 43, uh, talking about transmission reinforcement for Sizewell C. Well, Sizewell C is receding into the future faster than I am. Um, it, it, that's a worry. Does this actually affect um, the validity of East Anglia 3? You remember me objecting to the um, open, uh, open cycle gas turbine at I. That is designed to back these things up, and I'm afraid it is absolutely essential because we've gone this way. Um, this morning, of 15 gigawatts from the UK uh, offshore fleet was producing one gigawatt, about 7%. That's why we need the backups. Um, but we need the power, and it's vital. Nobody blames us if they walk away. Thank you, Councillor Flood. Uh, I'll be coming to Councillor Smith after Councillor Field. Thank you. Certainly, you care to respond now. Thank you, Councillor Hicks. Um, just coming back on that, um, obviously this paper aims to look after the residents of Suffolk and do what's best for Suffolk. What happens uh, at a national level is not something that this paper focuses on. This focuses on the cabling and making sure the residents of Suffolk 
are looked after and are this, the, what goes on causes the minimal impact as possible to the residents of Suffolk. As far as the national picture goes on uh, wind energy, uh, that's really not up for debate today or discussion. Um, what happens again also is what happens at Sizewell or does or does not happen again, I'm afraid, is not really what we're looking at again today. What we're looking at is the cabling and the infrastructure being put in place for East Anglia 3, and that is all we're here to look at today. So you may make points about those other things, but it's not really within the remit of what this paper is trying to achieve. Chairman, can I... Yes, I would, uh, that's good. Just, okay. just briefly to Councillor Flood, if I may, because he gave a list of those wind farms which have been postponed, and you mentioned Galloper in there. Well, Galloper is now ongoing. It, 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 it's no longer postponed. In fact, uh, the on... The on uh, I think... Do you mean the Greater Gabbard extension? Because the, great, the, the Galloper wind farm is being constructed now. The onshore facilities are being built now, and I'm going to visit the site on the 11th of May because it's with, it comes a short size well within my area. Just, just That's my understanding. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Field. Thank you. Yes, I did intend to stick to the point of the paper, really. Um, you may notice that my division includes uh, Akenham, Claydon and Bramford. Oh, and Great Blakenham, all of which I think you'll have seen mentioned. Um, I, it's, I'm not unique in that, but it is a, it's at least my fair share of the disturbance. Um, I'm pleased to see the report. Obviously, the points have been made about undergrounding, a, a responsible attitude to long-distance long transfer of power. Certainly, part of it uh, still seems to be intended to be a DC transmission rather than yeah. an IC which is lower loss, so good to see them going that way. Obviously, they're driven by financial considerations and can't stick to something which is uneconomic, but nevertheless, they seem to be taking sound uh, decisions in many ways. I'm also pleased to see the support that officers have given to the negotiation process. I feel this is a case where they have certainly been fighting for the residents of Suffolk, you know, not to the disadvantage of the greater English population, but nevertheless they've been fighting the corner in a very competent way that, that's absolutely essential if communities are to be supported out there. And that, I feel, is good to see. There are still obviously going to be a range of problems. Uh, the issues that were mentioned about hall roads, and traffic, very large cables, I mean a kilometre of cable that's four or so inches, dare I say, 100 centimetres in diameter, is no small item to be shifting around. They're clearly going to cause issues during the construction phase. As a local councillor, one needs some firm backup, in which you can say this is an amount of suffering. It is for the, you know, for, for the wider good, and it is temporary, and the ecological and whatever environmental conditions have been taken into account. So I find that uh, quite uh, reassuring. Also, uh, pleased to see that there's uh, £100,000 uh, uh, allowed for additional screening of the Bramford switch farms, inverter stations they may be. They are incredibly large buildings. Um, I think IKEA warehouses, three of them is uh, perhaps a way of ex expressing that. It clearly impacts the local population, but care has been taken to put them in an area where the impact is minimised. So I think that's a long way of saying overall I find the paper good. I find the officer's support for the community in my area excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Wood. Um, yes, I think it would be remiss of me um, not to say anything on this paper, bearing in mind the third of it lies in the area of Suffolk Coast and Heath A&B. I'd just like to thank the officer for, for the work they've done and the due diligence they've paid to this very fragile coast. I know you've worked alongside the officers at the, at the unit, and I think it, it shows a con this report shows a concern for, for what is extremely fragile coast and a, a superb coastline and the Suffolk coast, and I think we're leading the way in it. And, you know, I mean, the A&B is... is um, peculiar because we do have the, uh, the only OMB with a nuclear power station within it, but this has shown that we can cope with, with, um, with the offshore energy and we can still maintain the integrity of the coast. So I'd like to thank the officer very much for, for the work they've done and a, a really good report. Thank you. 
Jolly good. Thank you for your support. Any other comments, questions from people? No? Thank you. Now let's move to uh, exactly what I'm uh, requesting Cabinet to address in the recommendations. I'm going to read them out uh, so that we can then know what we're approving. What is Cabinet being asked to decide? That's on page 16 of your texts. Point six, to authorise the Director for Resource Management after consultation with the Cabinet Member for Environment and Public Protection to submit a local impact report and statements of common ground to the Planning Inspectorate during the examination of East Anglia 3, as informed by the key issues identified in this report and Appendix B. Point number seven, to authorise the Director for Resource Management to submit the Council's response under Section 56 of the Planning Act 2008 to the proposed East Anglia 3 Wind Farm Order, open brackets, Appendix B, close brackets, to the Planning Inspectorate as the Council's statutory response to the current consultation on the East Anglia 3 project, as may be amended to elaborate or clarify on the points contained therein. End of quote. Uh, it, does that have your agreement, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much indeed. Let's move on to the next item. We now move on to point seven in your agenda, uh, appropriation of land for planning purposes at Old School Drive and Wangford in Raiden, Southwold. The recommendations are set out on page 50, ladies and gentlemen, paragraphs 7a and 7b of the report at agenda item seven. And uh, may I request Councillor... Pardon? Page 54, just testing, thank you. Uh, play, could I ask Councillor Richard Smith, MVO, to present this report? Thank you. Mr Chairman, thank you. Um, before I start, may I um, just correct, I think, something that you probably missed out saying in your preamble, and that is a welcome to Mr Dobson in his place on your right hand at the top table where he should often sit. Now, it's quite true he's not as good-looking as Deborah, but he does, have his, he does have his uses, and it's quite useful having him over there rather than moaning at me from behind here. So it's, uh, I want to start uh, this item, uh, uh, Mr Chairman, with an apology, if I may, because originally from the papers this plan was omitted. I think this plan was uh, circulated when that omission was realised, but unfortunately the plan wasn't quite correct. It didn't have the pink line showing the right of way, uh, which the paper in paragraph 31 says is there. So you have on your table uh, a corrected plan with the pink line showing the right of way. Now, I have checked this morning with our senior legal officer that that makes no difference to what we decide today, uh, and he has assured me it does not. So, uh, Mr Chairman, this is really quite a small but technical item which does need cabinet approval. The County Council land under consideration is being sold to Orwell Housing Association and they will be erecting six shared ownership tenure affordable bungalows for occupation by older people. Care support for them, if necessary, can and will be provided from the adjoining Orwell Housing Association owned Pitchers View Care Home. The red boundary appears on the map and at first glance, it looks like it's going straight through the middle of a building. But I do need to assure you I have checked this out, and that building is now being demolished, and there will be land realignment, property realignment, following that, and the red line is correct. The other thing uh, to state is that planning permission for this development has already been granted by Waveney District Council. There are two site users at the moment, Raiden Toddlers Group and Southwold and Raiden Children's Centre, and they have both agreed to be relocated away from the site for around nine months. And when they come back, they'll be rehoused in a new pavilion being built on the south, land south of this site uh, by the Raiden Playing Field Charity, and they will enjoy much improved facilities. The dwelling to the south of the red line is a house known as Farthings. And that has a right of way over our plot, marked, I think it's purple rather than uh, pink, but uh, I don't know, perhaps it's how, how one's eyes see this. But there is the diagonal line there, which is the right of way. And this needs to be extinguished 
to prevent any future access problems. Now, it's a fact that the right-of-way shown here has never been used. Uh, the property farthings has existing adequate vehicle and pedestrian access arrangements from Wangford Road, which is the main road shown. The bungalows unoccupied at present, and we are led to understand, or we believe, that the owner is in long-term care. So a response from the owner has not been forthcoming. But the effect is extremely minor, as the right-of-way, when it abuts the property, uh, meets a close-bordered fence. And as I say, it has never been used, and we think uh, the advice that I've received from officers is that the extinguishing of this right-of-way, following the uh, decision made by the Cabinet today, will, will be in order. So I recommend that the Cabinet agree that the land be transferred from its current use as a car park and community youth service, with the present users having left the site, but with guarantees that they will be back in another building in about nine months' time. Uh, so it's gone from that use to planning purposes under Section 122 of the Local Government Act 1972, and then to resolve that the land is no longer required for the purpose for which it is currently held. As a result of the decision taken, when it's taken, the present right-of-way will be extinguished under Section 123 of the Town and Country Planning Act 1980. I've become more of an expert in these acts than I thought I ever would be. Uh, Mr Chairman, I move the recommendations 7A and 7B on page 54. Yes, thank you, Councillor Smith. You raised some nice points there for us. Uh, comments, questions? Councillor Hobsenberger. Thank you, Chairman. I welcome this paper, and indeed, it's a development which gives back to the community, improved community facilities. I'm, I'm particularly pleased to see the um, development of six shared ownership 10-year um, affordable bungalows for um, older people. Um, in particular, the work we'll be doing with um, the Pictures View Care Home, with um, providing that um, vital um, offer of care support to the community. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Goldson, then Councillor Hicks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also welcome the report. However, I do have concerns. Um, ha Southwold is an ageing population, and we are putting more care facilities in and more uh, affordable bungalows for elderly people, which is again encouraging more elderly people into the area. I too have a similar issue. We're in my division where we're doing a very similar scheme, but on a much larger scale. And again, the concern is that there is very little housing, affordable housing, to bring younger people into the area. Because unless we have younger people, we've got to have no one to look after our older buggers you know, in years to come. And although we may laugh about it, it is a serious issue. Um, but I, I do support the paper, but I think that's something we should be conscious of in the future. Thank you for raising those points. Councillor Hicks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also support the paper, but I think I'm just looking for some assurance uh, from my Cabinet colleague um, because I am slightly nervous to hear that we have made every attempt to contact the owner of Farthings but haven't, that, we, that we, ha we do feel that we really have done everything within our possibility to contact the owner of that property to let them know they will lose their rights away, even though it hasn't been taken up. Um, and, and also, can you confirm from the map that there is access, because the access isn't shown from Farthings onto that road, that there is clear access for that occupier should they move back home? Thank you, Councillor Smith. Yes, uh, yes I'm, I'm happy to come back. Every effort has been made to uh, contact the owner of the Farthings property. It is true that we haven't had any response. Uh, and I have talked at some length this morning to the head of legal here at the County Council about that. But because the right-of-way has never been used and because it's blocked at the moment by the property fence, I'm told that is unlikely to be a problem. I think that was how the, uh, the legal advice came to me, unlikely. We can't absolutely predict the future, but as a result of these decisions taken today, when the Cabinet takes them, there will be the legal power to do this, and so there will be a, a proper chain of decision-making in place. As to access, I am assured by my colleague, uh, Brian Prettyman, behind me that there is access from the road. Brian, are you able to be any more exact? Um, no, it's a while since I was going to be But I, I am sure there is. 
Thank you for that assurance, Councillor Smith. Uh, other comments from Cabinet colleagues? Questions? Over to other colleagues? Questions? Comments? Thank you very much indeed. Ah, oh, yes, I do beg your pardon. Sorry, Councillor Field. Could I, could I just ask that it's clear that they, the access to Farthings is a vehicular access um, because it, it is onto a road and uh, highways authorities tend to be somewhat sensitive to extra additional accesses onto roads and uh, the access that's shown in uh, pink or whatever the colour is does seem to be uh, more than pedestrian. Uh, would, Councillor Smith, did you care to, to read? I, I'm sure it is, and I think it says something in the paper. I'm just trying to, to, to find where it is. But I am positive it is a vehicular access. Councillor Goldson. I know the area. I know that site extremely well. It's, to the best of my recollection, I don't think I'm wrong, there is vehicular access from Farthings directly onto the Wangford Road. It's not shown on here, but that's definitely there. Because they, you, when the school was there, he, didn't ha he never used the access. They had to have another way, so it was fenced in. Uh, are you content with that, Councillor Field? Thank you. Any other points, comments, colleagues? Let me direct you to what we're being asked to decide then. Thank you. Uh, it's on page 54 of your uh, contents. Point number 7A, that the site of Old School Drive and Wangford Road in Raiden, Southwold, hereinafter known as The Land, shown for identification purposes only, as edged in red on Annex 1 to your report, held by the County Council, be appropriated from its current use of car park and community youth services to planning purposes under Section 122 of the Local Government Act 1972 and B, to resolve that the land is no longer required for the purpose for which it is currently held. End of quote. Mr Chairman, may I just interrupt you there, because you certainly, quite rightly certainly. read that out, and you said uh, on the third line of the recommendation, Annex 1 to the report. I've just noted that the new plan, which has been uh, handed out today, is Annex 1A. So perhaps we should change Annex 1 to Annex 1A, because we must get this right. Yes, thank you for that direction. I think that's, that's of assistance to us. So with that amendment, would you care for me to read it again or take that as read, everyone? We'll take it as read. Cabinet colleagues, you're in favour of that? Thank you for your support. Next point. Is there any urgent business, ladies and gentlemen? There is no urgent business, I'm assured. Thank you very much for your support. And oh, did you want to say something? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, it's sort of related to the rights of way we've just been talking about. I went to a meeting of, I think, the British Horse Society. They're having a huge push on rights of way applications. We're talking about over spaces of about 10 square kilometres, finding dozens of rights of way applications that they'll be able to put through. I sent the details to the chairman of the rights of way committee. I think the cabinet might need to think about this the resource implications could be quite large. Thank you, Councillor Flood. That's duly noted. Thank you very much indeed. No other business? Thank you and good night. <laughs>